Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Are You Ready? Best Practices for Mastering Virtual Selling in a Hybrid World. We're so glad you were able to join us today as we continue our series for webinars with sellers, sales leaders, and sales enablement teams. Now, just a few housekeeping notes before we get started. I have muted all attendees' lines to ensure the best sound quality. I recommend that you close out any other programs on your computer to make sure you have the best streaming experience. We will have a Q&A at the end of this session. Please submit your questions in the questions tab in the control panel at any time. Finally, please note that this webinar will be recorded and shared with attendees post event. Now let's get into it. I am thrilled to have a few great speakers here who are going to share insights from Mastering Virtual Selling, a brand new book that gives you the strategies and tactics that you need to succeed in today's hybrid selling worlds. First, we have Mark Magnaca, president and co-founder of Alego. Mark is an entrepreneur, speaker, and author who helps sales leaders shorten sales cycles and distribute their best ideas faster. We also have Tony Jerry, the results guy. Tony is a strategist, executive coach, and facilitator to CEOs from the Fortune 500. He's known as the results guy because he helps clients get the right results faster. Thanks for joining us today. Over to you, Tony. Hey, thanks, Brianna. Well, Mark, you ready to get started? I sure am. Let's do it. Okay, so what I'd like to do, if you guys would, put the next slide up. I'd like to talk about kind of the purpose, process, and payoff. Um, really what we want to take away, we want everybody to see, we want everybody to get, is kind of some new ways to really sell. So we're going to show you those, demonstrate them. We want to share several essential skills from our new book, as Brianna said. In the book, I believe, Mark, there was 14 really identified as essential skills that we, that we want to unpack. We'll unpack many of those today. And we want to demonstrate some new concepts that hopefully everybody that uh, is with us today or watching the recording will say that's some good stuff. The way we're going to divide out our time together today is we're going to look at orchestration, which really is the big theme of our book. If you look at it, you can see kind of the guy orchestrating. So we want you to really take that away as one of the things. And what that leads into uh, is the front stage backstage. And we got a great story in just a minute. I'm going to tell you how all that came to be with Mark's uh, chance encounter with Ben, uh, and I think you'll find that an interesting story. And then we'll talk about technology capabilities. So again, we divided our time together, let's say these next 40 minutes into those three buckets. And the payoff, of course, anybody that's in sales or sales management, uh, we believe will pick up some distinctions that will help you be better in this virtual world we're living in. The next slide, let's take about three things to remember. Uh, orchestration is kind of like you're the manifesto, excuse me, you're the maestro of your own orchestra. And we want you to think about that as all you're putting, putting all the pieces together. Uh, you're the guy with the baton. You're the uh, salesperson that's making things happen. We want to, again, reinforce the front stage, backstage as a new approach to selling where you really remember that uh, concept and that uh, it's a team sport. So uh, before the pandemic, before everybody was really doing heavy duty, uh virtual selling uh there was some team uh things happening right mark and now it's like to a whole nother level or we're proposing it should be a whole nother level as we move into our first segment uh orchestration i'd like to set up uh as we were strategizing on the book how could we really bring to life a message that people could get could you utilize to be better and mark started telling us about this next guy go ahead and show him on the screen uh, and his chance encounter with Ben. And it's a very fascinating story. So the way we're gonna begin today uh, to get into our content was this uh, was this chance encounter that caused the entire book to come to life. And hopefully as a value component for you, for you to really, really remember what we're saying in a book that can really change the way that you, uh, uh, you're affecting us to a whole nother level, if you will, uh, in selling flat screen. Mark? Tony, thank you. So let's jump right in on this idea. And I want to anchor everybody in and ground them in the word that you've been using. So first of all, there's more than one definition to the word orchestrate. But the word and definition that we're using from Merriam-Webster is to arrange or combine so as to achieve a desired or maximum effect. That's the way we're talking about orchestration in this concept. Now, it just so happens that it also relates to the business of music, as in an orchestra conductor. Now, some of you might not think that a, a maestro for an orchestra is the most natural metaphor uh, when we think about salespeople, but what you're gonna see is that Ben Zander is no ordinary maestro. 
First of all, the word maestro, in case you didn't know this, derives uh, in Italian, it means master. So in Italian, you, you refer to people as a maestro, either a teacher is often used, that word is used sort of as a sign of respect. You say maestro in Italian, and that means master or teacher. Or in the context of music, the person who plays the role of, of Ben Zander, as you can see in this TED Talk. Now, why are we showing you this piece and what does this have to do with you or the book? Well, you'd be surprised because the basic framework of this whole book came from, as Tony said, a chance encounter. The video on your screen, if you haven't seen it, you need to screenshot it right now because uh, this may change your whole experience for those of you who love music. Because Ben Zander, uh, this TED Talk has been seen by more than 15 million people on TED and another 5 million on YouTube. It's a 20 million view video, which puts it up there with the top videos on, on TED Talk or YouTube. So what is it that is related to this story? Well, it's 2011, three years after this came out is when I first saw it. So that's the first clue as, as we start to unpack the story is that the power of using virtual does not have to be synchronous, meaning I didn't have to watch it live at the TED conference out in Monterey, California. And in fact, I didn't even watch it the same year. I watched it three years later. But what happened, Tony, as you know, is this, this video blew me away. And I thought, who is this guy? And coincidentally, I'm from Boston, he's from Boston. So I found out there's a concert happening and I called to get tickets. And um, I was gonna invite my brother to the concert and it's totally sold out. Now, usually what I've learned from Tony is I never accept no, the first no, certainly. I, I'm gonna work through it. So Tony, I pulled every string I had, I called everybody and I couldn't get tickets to this thing. And then I started Googling Ben Zander, maestro Ben Zander, and up pops a phone number for his office in Boston. And uh, I just took a shot. And so I dialed the number and sure enough, on the other end, someone picks up and says, hello, with a British accent. And I said, maestro? And he said, yes. And I explained who I was in the TED talk and my plight. And he said, well, listen, I'm terribly sorry. There's no more tickets to the concert this evening. However, I'm doing a private event tomorrow night and I'd be willing to invite you as my guest to that event. And I thought, wow, this is awesome. So Tony, the part that was so amazing, I think for our listeners is what happened at that meeting and, and how it ties into really what we're gonna be talking about next, which is specifically the idea of the backstage. You see, if, uh, if we pivot now into the next slide here, we're gonna talk about one of the key strategies of virtual selling. And the first thing I wanna anchor your attention to is this blue and this red. Now there's no political overtones to the blue and red in this context, uh, just a learning for you. Blue to us means front stage, and that's anything that is synchronous communication, like those of you who are watching this event live right now. Red represents what we call backstage or asynchronous, and that's anything that's happening not in real time. So in your world right now, a telephone, conf a telephone call, for example, is a synchronous conversation. A Zoom meeting is synchronous, right? But as soon as you go to text, even if you're responding to someone's text, the moment after they send it, it's still asynchronous. It's not in real time. So what did I learn from Ben Zander that relates to this concept? Well, what I learned is that Ben Zander did some things before the concert started. Ben Zander did some things when the concert had begun, and then he did some things afterwards. And the thing you're gonna see a little bit later in this webinar is that I called Tony Jerry more than 20 years ago to ask him to be my presentation coach. And what's remarkable is he taught me something back then that was called before, during, and after. It sounds so obvious, Tony, it sounds so simple, but I didn't know it. And that was that there's things you do before you start a presentation, there's things you do during a presentation, and there's things you do after the presentation. And would you agree, Tony, this is like us updating that idea? Okay, so- hey, hey, Let me just say this. One of the things we need to encourage everybody to do is if you have your phone and you see some of the slides or some of the visuals that are part of what we designed in the book that could help you remember what we're saying, please take a click of the slide. We'd like to encourage you to end up with maybe three or four different uh, clicks or screenshots that you click on your phone 
that might be valuable for you. Mark, I forgot to say that earlier, right? It's a great point. And this, this graphic is a perfect example of one that will quickly remind you of it. So what, what you want to know is that, and this relates to a question that's come up in a couple of the webinars that we've done. The question has been around, how do you engage people? And while we're going to get to that in more detail later, I want you to think about the backstage is all the things you can do with an email, with sending an agenda, with sending a short form video, with sending relevant content. It's all the stuff, almost like the trailer to a movie that you do to get people engaged, to want to pay attention up on, on a live Zoom call. And what happens, Tony, what we're seeing is too many people are spending all of their energy, they, they have a call back to back from 12 noon to 1 p.m., then at 1.01 they jump on a call, they have no time to build rapport, they have, they're, they're mentally exhausted, and so they jump into the front stage as if Ben Zander just jumped in front of the orchestra, picked up the baton and started playing. And what I learned that night is that's not what he did. Those of you who've ever acted in a play, those of you who've ever been backstage at a concert, you know there's a whole bunch of things that happen before the show to make sure that it works. We're gonna show you how that applies in your virtual selling. You know, one of the things, Mark, I've been doing over the last several months is I've been looking at my schedule in the morning and I think about people that I have on my schedule and part of my preparation beforehand is I will text people and I'll tell them, hey, I'm looking forward to our one o'clock call today here's one of the things that I want to really zero in on, or here's something we want to take away. And I tease them with value at the beginning with just a text. And then they look forward to that one o'clock call. Are you doing some of that? Well, I am. And in fact, you know, uh, it, it was something I wasn't really doing in a consistent manner. I was doing it haphazardly, but in the writing of this book, which, which pulls together the best ideas from you and from our other co-author, Yu Chun Lee, what we realized is there's all of these best practices. So I wanna make sure all of you who are listening right now understand that what we synthesized into this book is literally, we took a giant pile of all of these best practices and we kept vetting it down and vetting it down and vetting it down. But Tony was doing this during the meeting. So we were writing the book over nine months and it was the day that we were gonna have the call and he would text me in the morning, hey, looking forward to catching up. What do you think about this idea? Boom, he just created engagement. And I recognize some of you are thinking, yeah, but that's not the same of creating uh, engagement with a new prospect. You're right, it's not. We have something else that we're gonna recommend for that. But for people that you already know and it's an ongoing relationship, it's a powerful strategy to differentiate yourself. So, so Tony, before we move on, um, what we're really talking about here is new ways to leverage resources and time and how to deliver a compelling buying experience. Because those people who say you just can't deliver, a personal, a compelling buying experience virtually, uh, that's because they don't know what we know. The fact of the matter is, A, you can, and B, according to McKinsey, more than 60% of buyers want to do it this way as at least part of the process versus thinking we're going back to 2019. Let's jump to one more slide here, Tony, and then we can, uh, we can bounce it back and forth a little bit on the micro buying experience. Why don't you start, Tony, just by overlaying why before, during, and after is so important as a mindset, and then I'll fill in underneath. You know, for years, I've written, this is my 27th book, Mark, on, um, on presentations, as you know, and I constantly am looking at how do you strategically make a, a presentation where you reach the objective that you want to reach. And what we're really saying here in the book and what we're saying today uh, on this webinar is there is these three components. Uh, there's before, but during and after. And what you're doing up front, the intro, like sending the agenda, sending the objectives up front, uh, looking at people's information. One of the things that we do, Mark, almost all the time now internally as part of our prep is we will do a prep sheet on whoever we're uh, speaking with. My team will go in and they'll look up people's bios on their LinkedIn. And it's so valuable to have that information in front of me before I start making a connection with a potential uh, person that may, may be buying into what we have to offer. And so that whole front end just really sets you up. Your confidence goes up. And then when you start off, you have a connection. And then when you're following up, you're linking back to what you said in the first place. So it's kind of like a lot of people fit in that blue and they want to get exceptional in that blue, but they fail really on this, on this beginning prep stage and on the follow-up. Would you agree? It's so true. And you know, it's so, it's so much like athletics. It's like in any, in any sport, it's, it's, a, it's imagining I can show up on game day 
and uh, all I got to do is be in peak performance on game day. No, it's all of the stuff that happened in practice before you ever got to game day. And so one of the things, Tony, that I, I would build on that you just described here, here's a, I'm not going to call this one a million dollar idea. I'm going to call it a hundred thousand dollar idea, but it's a big idea. Tony and I both were old school enough, even though we're using this, this modern means is that um, we both still like printing out the, the LinkedIn's. And so I'll have people, if I have five people on the call, I'll literally have five LinkedIn's around me. And to Tony's point, I've studied them before on the call. It makes it very easy for me to thread the needle of where someone went to school, what we have in common. So there are absolutely ways to build rapport before you get front stage. That's the first big aha. Tony, I wanna to build off your idea because here's the, here's the idea. What if there's five people on the call? Sometimes all five people, even at one company, they don't know each other. We take a screenshot of just the top part of the LinkedIn and I'll put all five screenshots into one email. And I'll say, hey, Tony, in advance of the call, I want to give you uh, uh, the quick update of the other folks who will be joining us. Well, I'm accomplishing a couple of things. I'm helping to make sure you know who's going to be on the call, you know what their title is, you know what their role is. And all of a sudden, there's this tacit sense of, I better show up. You know, they've just sent an email with my face on the, on the thing. So what we're, what we're finding is the combination of doing that, and this is a little, little insight that made a big difference. I can't tell you how many salespeople I've said, I have told me, I don't send the LinkedIn until after I've had the call. To which I say, why don't you send the LinkedIn invitation before the call? Your script is, dear Tony, in advance of our meeting tomorrow at 3 p.m., I'd like to add you to my LinkedIn network. That's it. 98% of the time when I do that, people accept the invitation. And now I have all of this connection that's happened before we get on the call. Does that make hey, sense, Tony? It does. Let me tell you something that just triggered in my mind. I know we didn't have this planned in, but I want to share this with everybody uh, today. When I ask people to kind of rate themselves on their presentation effectiveness on screen, they'll give me a number. And that number might be a seven or eight or a nine. And I say, well, let's reflect a little bit more. Let's divide it into three different numbers. How well do you prepare for your own, for your kind of flat screen presentations, preparation, one to 10? How well do you deliver it? And then how well do you follow up? And what I see is when they combine all those, it's less than their original number because they haven't really thought about, uh, you know, before and after. And I really push everybody today that's listening to think about for yourself, if you said, how good am I at really delivering flat screen sales presentations today? It's not just rating yourself live. It's what are you doing uh, backstage beforehand and what are you doing uh, in your follow-up? Right, Mark? It's so true. And, uh, you know, I, I want to make sure as you're listening to this right now, don't don't let this just wash over you and, and pass away. Realize, like, this is a big idea that can differentiate you. And we're going to about to show you one more big one. But I want you to take away that what you do before. I'll, I'll give you an example, Tony. Um, we did a, a webinar just uh, last week. We had over 300 people in attendance on this webinar. And most of the folks on the call were in the retirement plan business, which means they sell 401ks. So what the guy who I was doing the webinar with, whose name is Mitch Haber, what he did is he got in the habit of starting to send a short introductory video of himself to the committee that was making the buying decision. So he's stuck just like all of us. He's in, he's in a virtual environment. He can't do it in person the way he used to do it. But he decided in a way, it, in terms of being able to do something backstage, he sent a short video with the agenda. And so you watch the 60 second video and the video just said, I mean, the email said, uh, dear Tony, here's a short video to set the stage for our meeting and provide a brief introduction. The people watch the video and in the video is in the agenda, it's the agenda. Now to your point, there's this sense of like, wow, this is gonna be good. But what I found was so interesting, Tony, is what feedback he got was he was one of five people in a finals presentation that had happened just the preceding week. The feedback he got was he was the only one who sent A, an agenda, or B, a video. So right off the bat, he put himself into pole position with that client just by his preparatory work before he ever opened his mouth. Mark, take a look at our next slide here on uh, presence in your absence. We need to watch our time here. Bring this to life for us, please. 
So presence in our in uh, your absence is all about what happens after, before, during, and after. We call that the micro buying experience. So in the example I just gave you, this salesperson Mitch, he did his work up front, he did his his uh, live front stage meeting, and then his backstage included follow up. And by the way, Tony, some of the follow up was the call was being recorded using something we call conversation intelligence. So you know nowadays so many calls are recorded, but during the call there was a question asked that nobody had an answer to. So what he did in the follow-up is he took the snippet, it was just 30 seconds of audio, and in the case of Zoom, it would be audio plus a picture, but he took 30 seconds of audio, he said, here's the question that was asked, he wrote it out, um, and now here's the answer. So when people can anchor back and then take that email to other people who are part of the committee who weren't part of this call, say, this is one of the questions that came up, this is what we're doing, all of a sudden, this salesperson is providing so much value. Okay, so what happens after that? Well, we're big believers in this notion of creating presence in your absence as a way to stay top of mind, to stay relevant, right? And there's lots of things you can do. The example I just gave you was sending a recording from the actual call. You could be sending SME content. You could invite buyers to something called a digital sales room, which you can think of as a really easy to create microsite that has a couple of pieces of content curated specifically for your buyer. And then this automated note-taking and document follow-up, that goes back to this concept of conversation intelligence. So Tony, there's a lot here, and the purpose of the idea of create presence in your absence is this. You could do a great job in the live meeting, you could do a great job in that whole micro-buying experience, but if three weeks went by between meeting number one and meeting number two, which for those of you who are selling enterprise software or any kind of enterprise thing, they're long sales cycles, People forget about you. This is a way to consciously stay top of mind so that there's always a reminder. And Tony, honestly, you, you are one of the best at doing this between sending physical books, sending emails, staying on top of the sales cycle. It's a big part of why I think um, so many people fly into Dallas to come in and do what they do with you. Everybody, let's go to uh, let's watch our time. We just completed orchestration now. You know what I'd like to do is show you, Mark, that I have my baton. baton. I have it ready to go. And did you see that we had it engraved here, right? Love it. Mastering virtual selling. Wonderful. All right, we're going to number two. Uh, this is front stage, backstage. The 3D outline builder is something that I I invented, uh, Mark. I think it was like 18, 19 years ago, and it's really made up of the what, why, and how. Uh, and in doing that, it pushes you to think of, of the before, during, after. The point I think I want to make right now is the whole team approach. Uh, this is what Mark and I are really pushing, and, and Yuchan, in this book, is the team approach is uh, forever now uh, a bigger deal than before. Are you really looking at how you bring your team to life uh, in making things happen uh, for you uh, during and, and after to be able to create the result you want, to really take advantage of your backstage? Some people, Mark, when we wrote this book, some people we know don't necessarily have the same teams that you and I have. And there's some have bigger teams than you and I have. So being able to really stretch your mind to say, can you have virtual team members helping you do things? Can you have uh, uh, people that are not necessarily employed by you helping you be on your, uh, on your team and helping you do things? And so in the book, we've unpacked a lot of distinctions, if you will, on uh, really taking the the backstage uh, to life. And we've created that visual, and we've taken half of that visual in the book, in our book, we've taken half of it, and put it on the next slide. And Mark, can you can you bring this to life, this first half of, uh, of what we put in the book, so everybody kind of gets uh, this, this timeline approach? Yeah, so if you think about the timeline, Tony, uh, the first click here is what we just talked about, front stage, backstage. So if you think about it, there's there's what you do before, like the video intro, the agenda, the LinkedIn bios that I've told you about, and then you have your Zoom meeting. Now, most of the people on this call, they've gotten pretty good at, they know how to mute and unmute, although we all mess that up from time to time. Uh, they've gotten pretty good at putting a virtual background in or something like that if they're allowed to. Uh, and, and, and the concept, of course, of sending follow-up post-meeting, that's intuitive to most great salespeople. So if you go ahead and click again, now you have this idea of creating presence in your absence. So the question in yellow here is, what can you be doing 
between the first micro buying experience and the second micro buying experience. So imagine this first one is the first meeting, discovery meeting, you're getting to know people. Well, what if you could send um, a, a short form executive video in between the two meetings? Someone says, you know, one of the questions we have is about the future of your roadmap at your company. How great would it be to be able to ask your CEO, would you mind recording a two minute video just addressing this and using the name of my sponsor and this particular customer? Think of the personalization and meaning that that brings. Um, expert reports, analyst reports, there's all kinds of things you can do as a roadmap, really a playbook to keep this alive during that phase. And then if you click again, now it brings us to the next micro buying experience. So in some of these larger enterprise deals, Tony, there could be eight micro buying experiences or even more over the course of a year before you land that huge contract but being able to maintain this and have a mental model that I need to be doing both of these things well, that's the distinction. Yeah, one of the things, Mark, let me just point out too for all of our listeners, that when you're when you're dripping that uh, that component, that video, that uh, that email in between the time that you're touching people, uh, are you just doing commercial? Or are you really delivering value? So one of the things that we do a lot, Mark, I think you know for Many years we've we've dripped summaries of books on people, uh, yep. so so it pertains to what we might be talking about, um, and then all of a sudden they're getting value versus just a commercial that just kind of has that uh, that connection to you. So I put that out there for our listeners today to think about: Do you have a great arsenal of value that you can be dripping easily upon your prospects throughout the entire um, sales cycle? Okay. Tony, as a reminder, we're going to be giving uh, our listeners here access to our arsenal at the end of this webinar so they know exactly how to tap into this concept of an arsenal. All right, let's go to the next one, uh, technologies and uh, technology capabilities. Uh, this is the third component. Uh, Mark, I think you're going to take this slide, and then what I'll do is I'll bring together kind of 10 kind of summarized ideas that Mark and I have been talking about. Uh, and then we'll move into Q&A, but go ahead and bring this to life for us if you would, Mark. Yeah, so in terms of front stage, Tony, most of the people on this call are either using Zoom or Teams or Blue Jeans. They're using some uh, some video conference system like the one we're, we're using right now. Um, and in some cases, you have a choice on that. In other cases, you don't because your company selected it. So one of the first things we'll tell you on the front stage is you better be get good, not just at yours, but at the other parties as well. Because too often what happens is you're used to using Zoom and now you're on Teams or you're used to using Teams and you're not and now on Zoom and they're just different enough that it's like going from an uh, Apple to Windows, right? They, they, they do a lot of the same things, but they do it a little bit differently. So a small investment of your time to learn the platforms, the major ones, so that you can navigate intelligently, that's, that's a big takeaway from this. Now backstage, there's really four different needs that people have in terms of technology. One, you got to have a, a mechanism to make it very easy to share content. And again, that content could be PDF content. It could be video-based content. It could be video with content embedded within it. Um, and then there's this whole piece about being able to create a personalized introduction or welcome video or something where you're referencing the agenda. Then there's this thing called a digital sales room that I mentioned just a moment ago, and that is the concept of a very easy to create microsite. Imagine, Tony, for a salesperson, how, how unbelievable this would have been just a few years ago. I say to you, Tony, I've uh, pulled together four or five pieces of content that I think are a perfect fit for you and your team based on the conversation we've just had, and I share it with you immediately after our call. Now, when, when you open that, that microsite, what's happening is you're not only able to access this content that's been curated just for you, you could even message me within that uh, particular uh, microsite that we call a digital sales room. And, and best of all, I get notified on what stuff you've opened, what stuff you've shared. So now I'm getting intel on what does Tony actually care about? What does his team care about? So that I can be providing more relevant content. Maybe I provided a Harvard Business Review article. Maybe I provided something from the Wall Street Journal. But I, I get a sense of what you're interested in and what kind of resources you care about. And then the last piece is being able to analyze calls. And, and we're huge believers that in so many sales organizations, they are stepping 
there, there, there's acres of diamonds, if you will, uh, underneath the sales calls, because when you can listen to those calls and you can analyze them, you can detect patterns, you can capture guest pra best practices, you can do amazing coaching, coaching that's actually more effective than some of the face-to-face -face coaching that we used to do, because you have data and analytics to back you. Yep. That's the okay. big idea of technology. All right, let's go over to our best practices, kind of the top 10. Uh, this would be another one, uh, Mark, we might want to recommend to everybody that they, could, they take a picture. If you get, if you get your phone, take a click of this one. Let me walk through a few of them, Mark, if you want to make some comments as well. Uh, invest in the best, that's the invest, uh, uh, that's your, the best computer, the best lighting. You know, we have a variety of things, tools that we use to light up. Like uh, the second one there, the direct wire, you know, if you if you got your wire ready to set up, you know, that's a, that's a big deal if you can. Uh, the best tools, every kind of prop that you can think of, uh, making sure that you manage, of course, like Mark, you said, the, the mute button, uh, sharing your screen, being able to flip back and forth. If there's two of you that's making a sale, uh, can you have a person lining something up and sharing it so there's interactivity? If you have one person talking too long and you're not sharing the screen and you're not moving back and forth, you can be boring. People can zoom out, right? Every way that you can keep people really connected. Uh, looking at different tool options, being fluent in all the technology, just like Mark talked about, so that if you're flipping over to a different type of, uh, of connection software, you're ready to do it. Um, having your uh, your backup strategy in case something doesn't work, can you keep going? Those are some really top things that we talk about uh, in the book. The book is chock full of, of, um, of things that really would cause you to actually want to to really get out a highlighter and highlight the book, right, Mark? When we did uh, the book, we kept saying, how can we give tangible things that people can use uh, that they can say, I definitely am better at selling because you've raised my awareness in this book. Uh, it's not just teaching a skill or giving a process. We wanted to have awareness and we just, we, we built a book full of, of awareness ideas. Anything you wanna add on this slide, Mark? Yeah, I'm going to just take number 10. Uh, Tony, in the early days of the pandemic, I was doing a presentation for one of our clients in Canada. And to make a long story short, we did everything. I did the rehearsal. I did the practice. I, I mean, I followed all of our, our pieces. And I had a landline telephone. Now, a lot of people don't even have a landline telephone, but I had a landline telephone. And um, what I said was, in the event there's any kind of problem, that I want to be able to have a dial-in number. So I want to remind you that as much as in the early pandemic days, people would forgive just about anything with your pets coming on camera or, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, now that we've evolved to a different level, what I would tell you is that your ability to adapt and pivot makes a huge difference. What I mean by that is um, if your Internet goes out suddenly and, um, and that's it, that you're gone, that's on you because you need to have a backup plan. So what does a backup plan mean? And Tony, this is right out of the Tony Jerry playbook. Um, you gotta have a printout of the phone numbers that you need to call. You can't be scrambling at the last minute to say, what are the numbers? You know, how, how, where do I find all that information? So if, if, for example, your internet gets knocked out, you don't have a direct wired connection, or maybe even you do and the power goes out, how cool is it to be able to bang, get, get back on that call, Tony, be on the phone and say, listen, I'm sorry, I can't share the screen right now, but I can listen and we can still continue the conversation so it's not a total loss. Those kinds of things demonstrate that they're dealing with someone who's going to make it happen. Yeah, just earlier today where I was on a call and I had a little technology problem, and then I ended up taking my phone, calling that person, setting my phone down on a speakerphone so the person could continue on, and like we might have missed maybe 10 seconds, 15, just be really having that backup strategy ready to go. And in the book, we talk about tons of them. To make sure that we manage time okay, let's go back to our original t uh, three takeaways, if you guys would put that on the screen. Uh, here's the things to remember. Again, if you didn't take the picture of this in the beginning, take a picture again. The whole book is about orchestration, right? How do you bring that whole team around you as the maestro to make your sales presentations the very best they can be? The front stage, backstage, what are you doing when you're not live? What can you do beforehand and afterwards? And then how do you take that whole team approach and really look at it as a team sport? So, Mark, I think now we want to go over to Q&A. And what we can do is I think we've had some people send in some questions beforehand. We pick some questions that people have. And then also, I believe also, uh, Brianna, we've got it opened up now live where people can send in questions uh, live as well. Is that right? 
absolutely. So if you have any questions, please feel free to add them to the questions tab in the control panel. I do have a few so far, so I'm going to start pitching those to you, Tony and Mark. Um, one question, Mark and Tony, I've heard you talk about this and you've heard this from some clients as well, was this. My biggest challenge is building relationships and capturing the attention of my prospects as I bring them into the pipeline before I even get on my first meeting with them. Do you have any tips for building rapport with them? Yeah, sending uh, sending notes in front of, uh, ahead of time. Like I said earlier, you can send a text ahead of time and remind people that on the call you're going to be uh, revealing something new, a, a research piece that you have, uh, some statistic. So you can do that by text. You can do it by email. Uh, you can send it to their assistant and have them their assistant kind of flag them. Uh, I'm looking for all kinds of ways uh, all the time that I can get people involved. And what I want to do is I want to create not only curiosity but to remind them of the benefits of being on that call, being on time, and be ready to listen to me. How about you, Mark? Well, Tony, I would add that uh, what you just described is for someone that you already know or you have some level of relationship with, right? I'll yep. just take the other swim lane here. The other swim lane is for somebody that you don't know, ask yourself this question. Why should they listen to you, right? And so what I would encourage you to think about is what if you could put together literally a 30-second or less video, maybe even 20 seconds. And for those of you uh, who don't remember this, it, uh, it's harder to write, as John Adams said, a one-page letter than it is a two-page letter, right? So, so the question is, it's great practice for you to be able to send out, using your own unique personality, a short-form video that says, here's the reason I'm reaching out. Here's the homework that I did. Here's why I think I've got something that would be of interest. Would you be willing to spend 15 minutes to chat with me about this topic? There's no one foolproof system. There's no magic bullet here, but I can tell you it's much, the, the open rates that we're seeing among our clients at Allego who are using video as part of their engagement, even with their end user customers, separate from all of the use cases around learning and onboarding and new product rollouts and all that kind of stuff, Using it actually with the prospecting part of the process, our, these open rates are meaningfully better than email only. So, Tony, hey, part of it is putting, putting yourself out there. Here's something, Brianna, if you would. If anybody that's online with us wouldn't mind sending in to Brianna, have you had an aha in the last 45 minutes with Mark and I? We'd like to know that, too. So beyond questions, if someone could sprinkle in one or two ahas, Mark and I'd like to know that, and we'll share that across the board. Go ahead, Brianna, back to you. Great, thank you. And again, you can add that in the questions tab and I will share that with the group. Um, another question we had, and Mark, I think I'll pose this one to you. How can I add virtual selling skills to our onboarding or training program? Well, that's a great question. And you know, one of the things that we, we started with when we wrote this book was, um, if we're gonna do this, how can we actually help create a movement? And you know, there've been a number of different uh, books that have helped lead a movement over the last 20 years. And so one of, one of the things that started to happen already is that um, firms are asking us to take this content and rather than just in this webinar format, we're doing it where it's a three session training once, for example, one, uh, one hour a week over three weeks, as an example. And, and now what's starting to happen, uh, Brianna, is that it's helping to inculcate this. So even for those people on this webinar, you hear it once, and the idea may click for you or may resonate. It's a lot of information. But when you do it with your whole team, you're able to take one thing at a time and say, okay, backstage. Tony talked about three or four different things. What's the one thing we as a team are gonna try? Or the two things we're gonna try as an A-B test? And so what we're finding is being able to systematically go through this and figure out what are the blind spots in your existing process and then deploying some of the elements from this book that's one, one idea. And then, Tony, the second big idea that you can uh, talk about and the origin of it is the arsenal. Yeah, I, uh, uh, you can see behind me, Mark, um, the bins. Uh, many years ago, I was um, getting into the advice business that I'm in now. This is like decades ago. And I thought, how can I be really valuable to the people that I'm sharing? And I thought, if I build an arsenal of best practices, the best ways to do everything, and so I started collecting things that are in the bins behind me. And then, of course, as time went on, I said, well, how do I take pictures of them, scan them, have them electronically where I can just pick them up? And so, as you know, I've been pushing that concept out for many years of really being able to build an arsenal. And so many people miss this, even those that are on with us right now. 
ask yourself, how good is your arsenal of content, of marketing, of, of value that you, can, uh, that you can share with your prospects? And I just encourage everybody to, if you're not doing it right now, to go to a whole nother level. Have an arsenal on your phone, have an arsenal like in a Dropbox, have an arsenal on your computer, and then having even physical things that you can take pictures of, show, even, you know, just three-dimensionally where you can hold up as part of your arsenal. Your props, there's tons of ways that you can build your arsenal. And what Mark and I did is we started an arsenal on our website that we'll tell you about in a few minutes that you can start tapping into. And uh, I guess what we want to leave everybody with, Mark, right, is build an arsenal and tap into our arsenal, right? That's it. Yeah, you know, you can use ours to jumpstart it. But, Tony, in every business, I can tell you that at Alego, I have a channel, for example, that's that's my arsenal. And I share it with a number of our salespeople. And sometimes they use the same stuff and sometimes they, they modify it a little bit for their own unique needs. But it's so great if I'm dealing with an executive, I've got three or four things that are current, fresh and relevant. I know executives that I deal with. If I'm if I'm dealing with a VP of sales, right, it may be a slightly different a content set. But the point is, I am constantly keeping myself refreshed and in turn helping them save the time of having to curate all this stuff so you don't have to read the wall street journal every day or harvard business or mckinsey or whatever but if i can curate it down say this is the one article you need to read and they read that one now they're linking that feeling with me love it brianna great i do have a few aha moments here to share with you some interesting oh stuff. good thank you guys for doing great. that whoever, ladies and gentlemen whoever sent them in thank you absolutely um, let's see. So Marsha said that her aha moment was the continuous drip of engagement. Uh, we had another similar one come in from Todd who said, loved the provide value in your drip versus just doing a commercial and the concept of texting before the meeting with something relevant to the up upcoming combo to build engagement. You know, one of the things we do, Brianna, on that, and I think you might know more, but let me just tell everybody, we look at like 90% value and 10% commercial. So as a whole, as we're developing tools, building our arsenal, we're like, how can we have like, I might take a book summary and it's content, 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 and there's one line on the footer that says recommended by our company. And so again, 90% of it's value, value, value. And as we're dripping it, and then they're like, oh, recommended by Tony Jury International. So I encourage everybody to think about that as a, an extended part of the aha. When you're building your arsenal, think about how do you build an arsenal where it's full of value, and when you're dripping value, have it where it's 90% value and only five or 10% commercial. Yeah, I completely agree with that. And you know, Tony, if you think about it, this is not a new idea in the virtual world in that uh, the very best companies, you think about the airline JetBlue, for example, they have the JetBlue experience. They're, they're constantly doing these kinds of things uh, before you get on the plane, they, then you get on the plane and they've got, you know, they were the first one to have a television screen. You could watch direct TV for free and, and think of the genius of this. They got direct TV promotion and exposure for people who didn't know what direct TV is. And the people on the airplane were getting value from watching direct TV while they were on the plane. Then you went to some other airlines and they said, we don't even have televisions, right? So the, the, the concept of figuring out ways to create value without it just being a sales pitch is a profound thought. And what we're saying is that, that if you think in terms of that 90-10, it, it can be 100%. It can be 100% during that period of time. I'm giving you this because I think it's valuable. And by the way, you're still accruing goodwill back in that context. And you know, it's, it's, it's on someone's window, Brianna. You know, how, what we have in our windows, if, if, you, if you like the whole continued engagement, that's a cool idea to have in your window. And then you add to that the idea of really sharing something of value that has just a small part of commercial uh, appeal to it. That's another piece. And in the book, we've basically uncovered a variety of things that you should have on your window as you are approaching being a master of virtual selling. And a lot of it is not just skill set. It's aha. It's like, ah, I get it. 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 And we orchestrated the book in itself. So it would be chock full of ahas. Next one, next one, next one, next one. Can you tell I'm excited about the book, Mark? <laughs> Tony, I want to tell I want to tell our listeners a little something that um, we haven't told anybody yet, but we're starting with this group today, and I know we have a, a, a large number of people, um, a couple hundred people on this particular call. Um, what we what's come up from our our webinar last week, and remember, we just launched the book, um, so the book is available. But we've had a number of people already said, "Can I take these ideas and share them with my team? Can I take this book?" and start to share it. And if you think about this idea of the movement, I wanna be very clear on this book, we're the opposite 
of what many authors are like, which is you can't use my stuff. You got to pay to talk to, about anything. Don't even think about it. We're the opposite. We're saying, take the book, share it with people, right? Think of it like you're, you're evangelizing a message, but a message that you believe in. And what we're telling you is that you're going to be a thought leader by bringing these ideas to people. Maybe five years from now, this will be you know, much more well-known, but I'm telling you for the next one, two, three years, when you start asking someone, what's your backstage strategy for, for virtual selling? How are you creating presence in your absence? Do you have an arsenal, right? When you start doing that, any of you who are in the consulting business or, or selling anything, frankly, very powerful. We're encouraging people to do it rather than trying to lock it down. That's great. So Brianna, we have time for uh, one or two more questions and then we'll move to the arsenal. Time for one more question and I do wanna mention one more aha moment. Abdul said that his aha moment was not taking no for an answer and pulling out all the stops to get something. So it sounds like Abdul is gonna get some tickets to a concert as well. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I will just tell you this, Brianna. Um, uh, my longtime assistant has been with me for almost 20 years. I learned this from my mentor and I'm really glad that I was able to pass it on. Um, one day I was on the phone with my mentor, his name was Jeff Goldberg, and um, he explained to me that um, his assistant was gonna be calling somebody to try to get um, an approval to do something. And I said, well, do we need to wait until we get the approval before we continue this conversation? He goes, oh no, she'll get the approval. And I'm like, how do you know that? And he said, because she'll keep trying until she gets a yes. <laughs> and, and when I learned that, I realized, oh my God, this, this, there's really like a secret, a whole secret world that exists. I liken it uh, being with Tony one time in, in, uh, in the airport and you walk by this glass door. The first time I remember I ever went into the American Admirals Club and I had been sitting at this gate and it was dirty and loud and noisy. And, and we walked into this room and had these glass doors that went and we walked in to the other side and all of a sudden there was soft jazz music and people serving drinks. It, it was like I would crossed this threshold. I recognize that the people who are willing to not take no for an answer, they enter into a new world and everything's possible. Yeah. Okay. So, all right, you wanna go over to our last slide, Jenna? Do it, absolutely, Jenna. All right, so um, let me just share with this and then I guess, uh, I guess we'll kind of move into closure. Uh, join the community uh, to learn more. Uh, we want to have, let you have access to our selling arsenal. We encourage you to order copies. Uh, and you can do all that by uh, visiting a website that we set up that we built specifically for this book called uh, MasteringVirtualSelling.com. And let me just add to that uh, to that third one there, Mark. Let, you know, order a few copies and share with your team. And as Mark said, uh, really utilize our content uh, in in all kinds of ways in your uh, in your sales meetings. If you have a, a morning huddle uh, on Monday mornings, or you have daily huddles. Or if you happen to be any kind of in a sales management uh, position, we want you to take this. We built the book so it's easy to use as kind of a content-rich book uh, to bring your team to a whole nother world. Mark, you want to add to that? Yeah, Tony. One of the things that we did uh, in the book that I think people will find really interesting that very few books have is uh, our appendix is actually a book summary. So if I show you that the, the appendix is the book summary. So Tony talks all about how He's used the book summary, and I know he sent so many of them to me over the years, and it was a great example of creating presence in your absence. I told him, um, I just read a, a Malcolm Gladwell book, which at the time was called The Tipping Point, and I said, you know, the next one that just came out is Blink, bang, in my email shows up a book summary for the book Blink. So, so those are the kinds of things that you can do. I wanna leave everybody with a quote, Tony, from, um, from one of the people that we referenced in the book, a guy by the name of Dan Sullivan who runs a program for entrepreneurs called The Strategic Coach. Tony, he says this, he says, amateurs practice until they can get it right. Masters practice until they can't get it wrong. And the essence of that quote is the word confidence. Because you have to ask yourself this question, when you are confident, what are you capable of? Anything. And when you're not confident, exactly, you're capable of anything. And when you're not confident, well, even though you're very skilled, you might not be able to pull it off. So the beauty of the framework of front stage and backstage is ultimately the head fake to yourself is it's about making you confident 
so that you can handle anything that comes up and people can pick that up even through this kind of screen. Hey Mark, let's thank everybody for their investment of their hour today. Whether you're watching this live right now or you're watching it in a recorded uh, scenario, uh, we really appreciate you tuning in and picking up some of our distinctions. So let me ask you again, help us spread the world. Spread the word to the world. See if I can get that out right. Brianna, who, who wants to close it out? I'll close it out. Thank you everyone for joining us today. I hope you gleaned some valuable insights from everyone. As a reminder, we will share that on-demand recording with everyone as soon as the session is over. Uh, to learn more, again, go to masteringvirtualselling.com. And if you want to see more of Alego, go to alego.com and request a demo. Finally, we do have a short survey at the end of this session. Once you close out, please complete the survey and you'll help us shape some of the topics that you'll hear from us in the future. We'd love to connect with you. Please reach out. Again, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Tony. Everyone have a great day. Thank you, Brianna. Goodbye.